In this video, we're going to solve trigonometric values given one trigonometric value by using trigonometric identities. So we're going to refer to these identities in solving. Let's say, for example, 1. Sine theta is equal to 4 over 5, and theta is in the first quadrant. So we have to find the value of the other five the trigonometric functions using trigonometric identities. Since the angle is in the first quadrant, we should expect that the sign of the six trigonometric functions would be positive. So since we know sine theta as 4 over 5, we can use Pythagorean identities to get cosine squared theta. Transposing sine squared theta to the right side of the equation, we can have cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Since we know sine theta, we can substitute 4 over 5 to sine theta, and this would give us 1 minus the square of 4 over 5. And this would give us 1 minus 16 over 25. So we have 9 over 25. We need to get cosine theta, so we need to have the square root of both sides of the equation. Giving us cosine theta is equal to square root of 9 is 3 and square root of 25 is 5. Since we know sine theta, we can use the reciprocal identities to get cosecant of theta and that would be 1 over sine theta. So getting the reciprocal of 4 over 5, that would be 5 over 4 for the cosecant theta. Or if you use this equation, we have 1 over sine theta is 4 over 5. So that would be 1, copy the numerator, and then get the reciprocal of your denominator. That would be 5 over 4. Therefore, cosecant theta is equal to 5 over 4. Same thing with cosine theta. Since the reciprocal of cosine is secant, therefore, secant theta is 5 over 3. Using this process, we can have 1 over 3 over 5, since cosine theta is 3 over 5, and then that would be 1 times the reciprocal of your denominator, that would be 5 over 3, and therefore, we have secant theta is equal to 5 over 3. We need to get tangent and cotangent of theta. We can use quotient identities to get the values of tangent theta and cotangent of theta. So for tangent theta, since we know sine, we have 4 over 5, and cosine is 3 over 5. So simplifying, we have 4 over 5 times the reciprocal of your denominator, that would be 5 over 3. 5 would be cancelled, and therefore, tangent theta is equal to 4 over 3. For the cotangent of theta, that would be the reciprocal of tangent, so cotangent would be 3 over 4. To show the solution, we can have cosine is 3 over 5 and sine is 4 over 5. So we have 3 over 5 times the reciprocal of your denominator, we have 5 over 4. So this would be cancelled, and we have cotangent theta is equal to 3 over 4. Another example, let's say tangent theta is equal to negative 2 over 7, and the angle is in the second quadrant. So we have to find the value of the other five trigonometric functions. In this case, we can use the Pythagorean identity to get secant of theta. So by substitution, we have 1 plus the square of negative 2 over 7 as the tangent of theta stated in the problem. So we have 1 plus 2 squared is 4 and 7 squared is 49. So this can give us 53 over 49 as secant squared theta. 
we need to get secant theta. So we need to get the square root of both sides of the equation. Remember that if the angle is in the second quadrant, we should expect that the positive values among the trigonometric functions would be sine and cosecant only. Therefore, we should expect that the answer here is negative for secant. So secant theta is negative square root of 53 over the square root of 49 is 7. So that would be secant of theta. To get the reciprocal of tangent of theta, and that would be cotangent of theta, it should be negative 7 over 2. If we're going to use this identity, we have 1 over negative 2 over 7, and that would be 1, and then the reciprocal of your denominator, so that is negative 7 over 2. So cotangent of theta is equal to negative 7 over 2. For the cosine of theta, we have 1 over secant of theta. So we know the value of secant theta. So I have 1 over negative square root of 53 over 7. So I have 1 times the reciprocal of your denominator. And that would be negative 7 over the square root of 53. So we have negative 7 over the square root of 53. To rationalize, we need to multiply this quantity by square root of 53 over square root of 53. And this would give us negative 7 square root of 53 over 53. Since we know cosine theta, we can use Pythagorean identity sine square theta plus cosine square theta is equal to 1. So to get sine square theta, we have 1 minus cosine square theta. By substitution, we can have 1 minus, this is cosine theta, squared. And we have 1 minus 49 over 53. Simplifying, sine square theta is equal to 4 over 53. We need sine theta. So we have to get the square root of both sides of the equation. So we have sine theta is equal to square root of 4 is 2, and square root of 53 is square root of 53. Now we need to rationalize. So we have square root of 53 over the square root of 53. So we can have 2 square root of 53 over 53. Since the angle is in the second quadrant, sine is positive. For cosecant, we can use the reciprocal identity. We know the value of sine theta. So we have 1 over 2 square root of 53 over 53. So getting the reciprocal, that would be 53 over 2 square root of 53. To rationalize, we have to multiply this quantity by square root of 53 over square root of 53. So for cosecant theta, we can have square root of 53 over 2. This 53 would be cancelled. We can also use this strategy to get cosecant squared theta, since we know the value of cotangent theta. So by Pythagorean identity, we have 1 plus negative 7 halves for the cotangent tangent theta, and then square. So therefore, we have 1 plus this would be 49 over 4. Simplifying, we have 53 over 4. Getting the square root of both sides of the equation, we have cosecant theta is equal to square root of 53 over 2. For example, 3. Let's say cosine of theta is negative one-fourth and tangent is greater than zero. So we need to find the value of the other five trigonometric functions. 
since tangent is greater than zero, we can say that the value of tangent theta is positive. So we can say that the angle is in the third quadrant or the first quadrant. But it is stated here that cosine theta is negative. So cosine here is positive, therefore the angle is in the third quadrant. Okay, so we shall expect that only tangent and cotangent are positive. So for secant of theta, we just have to get the reciprocal of negative one fourth, and that would be negative four over one or negative four. Since we know cosine theta, we can get sine squared of theta, and that would be using one minus cosine squared theta. By substitution, that would be the square of negative one fourth for this part. Simplifying, I have 1 minus 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 6. And this is negative times negative. We have positive 1 over 16. Sine squared theta is 15 over 16. Getting the square root of both sides of the equation, we have sine theta is equal to negative square root of 15 over 4. So square root of 16 is 4. This is negative because the angle is in the third quadrant. For cosecant, we can get the reciprocal of sine theta. So by substitution, we have 1 over negative square root of 15 over 4. So I have 1 times negative 4 over square root of 15. So we have negative 4 over square root of 15. To rationalize, we have square root of 15 over square root of 15 to be multiplied by this quantity. Therefore, we have negative 4 square root of 15 over 15. For tangent theta, by using quotient identities, we have sine theta is negative square root of 15 over 4. Cosine theta is negative one-fourth. So we have the numerator negative square root of 15 over 4 times the reciprocal of negative 1 over 4, and that would be negative 4 over 1. This would be canceled. Negative times negative is positive. So we have positive square root of 15. And for cotangent, we have 1 over the tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is square root of 15, so we have 1 over square root of 15. And to rationalize, we need to multiply this quantity by square root of 15 over square root of 15. So we have square root of 15 over 15.